Will the ANC fall below 50%? It's the question on everyone's lips. It's the question that is driving interest in this election. What I can promise you is after watching this video, you will be in the best possible situation to decide that question for yourself. Let's get into it. Welcome back to SMWX, and today I want to take a deep dive into South Africa's election data. I want to really look at the history of ANC performance in South Africa's elections, because there are a lot of myths that are prevalent in this election about ANC performance, but it's actually quite a complex question to understand exactly how the ANC has performed historically in both national and local elections and also in the way that those two elections interrelate and come to have a bearing on each other. So the first thing we're going to do is look at ANC historical performance. Then we are going to have a look at the provincial picture. So we're going to look at national performance, and then we're going to look at the provincial picture. And I have news for you. In this election, there are potentially six provinces. Yes, you heard me right. Six provinces where the majority party could be under threat. And I will explain why I believe that, including the DA in the Western Cape, by the way. And then we're going to look at the future and what could change this picture. Because of course, we can't predict the future, but what we can say is what could change the picture to change and sway the current situation. But I will tell you that I think as it stands, the ANC's majority, the 50% majority nationally and in many provinces is under threat. Now I'll tell you a little secret in this channel. Our producer and I have a bet, as I have said before, um, about whether the ANC will fall below 50. I think it will. He thinks it won't. And one of us has to shave our beard um, when the election result is announced, if, if we're wrong. So comment down below if you're with my producer or if you're with me. But this video is designed to strike fear into the heart of my producer, Oradile, and see whether he still believes what he believes after this. No, I jest. This is a debate right now. No one knows what can happen, but let's see what the data is telling us. And it's very interesting. So to kick off, I want to put up this graph, which is a very important graph. And what this graph shows you is ANC performance in national and local government elections. So the blue line is national elections and the red line is local elections. Now, we could spend a whole hour just talking about this graph and what it tells us and how many myths it busts, right? I think the first thing that you'll notice, of course, is that the red line is always below the blue line. So in general, and you'll see only in general, the ANC has tended to perform worse in local elections than it has in national elections. In other words, the red line tends to be below the blue line. Now, you'll see that on the x-axis of this graph, we have obviously time or the years, right? So this goes from 1994 all the way up to the most recent local election in 2021. And then obviously on the y-axis, we have the percentage of the vote, right? So the ANC has typically been around the 60% mark, obviously above and below in different places. So let's take a look at this graph in more detail, right? Now, I'm not going to look at the period up to 2004, because that's when the ANC was really climbing, right? We know in 94, it was at 62.5 of the national vote, all the way to a high of nearly 70%, 70% in 2004, which was the climax of ANC 
electoral victory. But we know ever since 2004, the ANC has been falling. And it's from that period, right? So when you see the peak of the mountain going down to the other side that I want to focus on. So notice a few things here. We know that the ANC from 70% in 2004 has fallen to 57.5% in 2019. There's, there's so much that's happened in between there that we need to pay attention to. Now, the first myth that I want to bust is that the ANC always performs better after a local election. So there's this view that if the ANC got, say, 60% in a local election, the subsequent national election, it'll see a slight increase in its performance to, say, 63 or 65. Now, sometimes that's true, but sometimes it's not true. So notice between 2006, the local election, and 2009, the national election, the ANC was roughly stable. So they didn't get much better or much worse. So in 2006, in the local election, the ANC was at 64, or around about 65%. And in the national election, the ANC hit 65.9. So we see that after a local election, it's not automatically true that the ANC will see a bump. Sometimes that happens, of course, but sometimes it doesn't. Let's take another period. Between 2011, the local election, and the 2014 national election. Again, the ANC was very similar in those two elections. 61, or really 61.9, right? So, <laughs> sabotage from my producer, people. I'm sorry to stop this, but my producer has only just put the timer on now. So it's clear that there is foul play here, that people are trying to muddy the waters in this prediction game so that this episode doesn't come out. Be very, be very, be very careful, people. But Oradilla's, Oradilla's beard will fall, no matter the sabotage <laughs> or not. So I have no idea how long this is going, <laughs> is, has been, or is going to be, but, but there we go. Um, <laughs> so, so between 2011 and uh, uh, 2014, the ANC, again, got very similar results. So in the local election, it got 62%, 61.95. And in the national election, it got 62.15. So very similar. So what those two cycles show you is that between 2006 and 2014, there was no real difference. I mean, there was a slight difference, but no real difference between what the ANC got in the local election and what it got in the later national election. Why is that important? Because when we look at where the ANC is right now after the most recent local election in 2021, we see that it's already below 50. In fact, the ANC got 46 in the most recent local elections. If you add up all the votes, obviously it wasn't a national election, but if you add up the total votes, the ANC was already below 50. So even if we saw that pattern repeating itself where the ANC stays roughly where it is after a local election, it would be at about 46 in this election. Now, we did see a bump after a local election between 2016 and 2019. And this was in the transition period between Jacob Zuma and Cyril Ramaphosa. And I think that bump can largely be explained by Ramaphosa mania, right? This idea that was peddled in various media publications and all around the country that Cyril Ramaphosa was going to institute a new dawn and that there was going to be manna flowing from heaven 
corruption would be solved, the economy would be growing, and load shedding would be a thing of the past. So in 2016, the ANC got 54% of the, the total votes. But in 2019, there was a rebound, and they went all the way up to 57.5. So really, we saw a Ramaphosa rebound. So the question in this election, if we look at historical trends, and I'm going to come on to the polls just now because they paint an equally interesting picture, is if there is going to be reason for there to be some kind of rebound in favor of the ANC, and I just don't see that. In fact, if anything, I think there could be the opposite. So my question would be, what is the rebound effect that is going to take the ANC from where it was in the last local election? When, by the way, load shedding was, was better than it has been in the last few years. What's going to push them back up above that 50 mark? So when we look at historical trends, we see that the ANC has already fallen below 50. It's currently at 46 in the most recent local election. Now, let's imagine that they got a similar rebound to the one they got during Rama, Ramaphoria, right? So they went from 54 to 57.5, which is an increase of 3.5 percentage points, right? Now, if they went from 46 plus 3.5, they would be then be at 49.5. So even if they got the same bounce from the local election as they got from the last local election, they would still be below 50. They'd be at 49.5. That's where the ANC would be. So this analysis of historical trends would suggest to me that already before the MK party, because remember there was no MK party in the local elections last year, the ANC is already looking at a below 50% prospect just by looking at historical trends. I want to add one further aspect to this. And that is that if you look at the decrease in ANC national support, it's not decreasing in a linear fashion. It's actually decreasing at an increasing rate, if you get me. So the decrease is happening faster and faster and faster. So I think that it's possible to assume that the ANC will just decrease the same every election, but you also have to take account of the rate of that decrease, right? So 2004, they go from 70 to 66 in 2009. But then from 2009 to 2014, they go from 66 to 62.15. And then from 62, they go to 57. And that was a slightly steeper drop than the drop before that. So once again, the question is, what is going to be the steepness of this decline? And will that be a, a decline which is a linear decline? Or will we see a kind of curved and much steeper and steeper decline unfolding. We've certainly seen extremely steep declines in local elections, where the ANC was at 64% in 2006, all the way down to 46% in 2021. Even in 2011, they were at 62, and they fell all the way to 46 in 10 years. So, the historical trends tell us some interesting things, and we often think we know what election results were, but we actually don't really know. And when you really look at what the election results are, you see quite a precipitous decline heading the ANC's way. It's going to be close if we just look at this historical data without looking at any polls right now. It's going to be close, but Right now, they seem to be somewhere between 46 and 49.5. Okay, let's look at the polls, though, right? 
Now, I know some of you say, and I've heard some political party leaders say, no, don't listen to the polls. That's usually because they aren't getting 1% in the polls. So, of course, they don't want you to <laughs> look, at the, look at the polls because that would be very bad for them, right? Let's talk about the polls. Now, let me tell you why I think the polls matter. Let me tell you what Ipsos predicted before the last election. So according to their medium, ter medium turnout scenario, which is what most people expect, we're probably going to have a low to medium turnout. This is before the last election, right? They predicted the ANC would get 61%. What did the ANC get? 57. Okay. 57.5. So you could even round it, round it off to 58, right? So they were within three and a half percentage points. Okay. So what that tells you, and the margin of error is often two or three percent. So what a poll is able to do, and what South African polls tend to do, is they won't give you the exact, they, they won't predict the exact number but they will give you the ballpark of where things are likely to end. So you ignore the polls at your peril and don't allow politicians who are not doing well in the polls to tell you whether you should believe them or not. Just look at the historical data, right? So the medium turnout scenario had the ANC at 61, the ANC got 57.5. They had the DA at 19 and the DA got 20. 0.7. So they were within 1, 2% of that. The EFF, they predicted they would get 11%. This is Ipsos. They got 10.79. So they nearly got that spot on. The IFP, they said, would get 3%. The IFP got 3.38. So what you can see is that these polls really do actually give you a direction. They won't tell you exactly, but within 3%, either way, you can expect them to be quite accurate. And that, that, that was Ipsos, for example. Now, what I will say is that this poll was the poll right before the election. So we haven't got that poll yet. And we will do a video when we get that poll. But when you, when you see the May poll coming out of Ipsos, you can start, you can really start figuring out what's going to happen. We don't have those polls yet, but let me tell you where, where things currently stand. Um, Ipsos has the ANC nationally at 41 right now. 41. So remember, they had them at 61 before the last election, and they got 58, roughly. They now have them at 41. So even if Ipsos is wrong, right? Even if Ips is, let's say Ipsos is 5% out. Well, the ANC would still be at 46, right? So it's hard to see how Ipsos could be nine points off right now. But again... Let's wait for the latest poll. What is striking is that some polls have put the MK party, uh, uh, by the way, this is before the MK party, because the, when they did this poll, MK didn't exist, right? Um, now, some polls that have come out since the MK party came out has the MK polling at 10%. 13% nationally, right? Which is just a game changer, right? Now, where they get those votes from remains to be seen, but at least some of them could come from the ANC. So basically, if you take all the polls and um, credit to the Social Research Foundation, who has an interesting combination of the polls, which I'll also put up on the screen for those of you who are watching and not listening, Basically, the ANC has gone from being around 50% on average to being around 45 on average to now in the most recent polls being around 40. So we're seeing this decline and poll after poll is putting the ANC 30, 39 to 41 
right? So what the polls are telling us is that the ANC is falling. What the historical trends are telling us is that the ANC is falling. Now, what does this mean for the opposition? Well, if you look at where the polls are roughly putting the DA, they're putting the, there's actually an interesting disagreement. The Brentos Foundation and the Social Research Foundation have the DA high. And high means like mid to high 20s, 27, 25. Ipsos and some other polls have the DA around 20, 19, 20. So there's clearly disagreement. Maybe it's a methodological disagreement in where the DA is sitting. It's either somewhere in the mid to high 20s or it's in the low teens to early 20s. Again, there's disagreement on the EFF. The Brenthurst and Social Research Foundation polls have them at around 10, 11. And Ipsos and some other polls have them at around 17, 18, 15. Once again, don't worry too much about what any individual poll is saying, but just look at what the trend is telling you. It's telling you that the DA is going to be somewhere between 19 and 27. So it's going to be in, a, in and around that area. And it's telling you that the EFF is going to be somewhere around 10 to 17, somewhere in that ballpark, right? And when the latest poll comes out, then we'll be able to narrow it down further. And it's telling you that the MK party, but let's wait for the more recent polls, could be as high as 10%, as 13%. So maybe we're talking somewhere between 8 and eight and 13 right now. So what does this mean, if we put it all together? What it means is that we could be on the brink of a truly important shift in South African politics, a shift which none of us have seen in our lifetimes, which is that the ANC could lose its majority. And the data that I've seen tells us that. Now, I know there's always this nagging thing in your mind, like, no, but it just can't happen. It just can't. It just can't. And maybe that's true. Um, maybe, I mean, nobody knows. Maybe that day when we all go to the polls, everyone changes their mind and the ANC gets 70% again, right? But the fact of the matter is it has never been like this before. We've never got these kind of polling numbers that have put the ANC this low, so close to an election. So the fact of the matter is that you need to start preparing for the possibility, and I would say the probability, I think it's, I think it's above 50% that the ANC will fall below 50%. Let me put it that way. Um, I think that's the more likely scenario right now. And the question for me is how far below 50 they fall. Will they just cling on? Or will they go to these lows that we're starting to see of 40? Now, 40... ANC at 40, or even 42, 43, that really changes the game. Because they can't just take one partner with them, like the IFP, over the line. So basically what I've tried to do in, in this section, before we get on to what could change, is, is just give you an understanding of the historical trends, bring in the polling data, but try to explain why the polling data matters and help you understand where it fits in our forecasts and our projections and our predictions. And try to explain why I think I'm going to keep my beard. But it's going to be rough. If, I, if, if you just see me doing an episode and I don't have a beard after election day, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to emerge. Um, what do you think? Comment down below. What do you think of the polls? What do you think of the historical data? And what do you think of where the ANC sits? You know, when things change in politics, they don't announce themselves. And um, I think we could be staring at a, a very interesting election result. Now, what could change? A number of things could change. Hasn't it been nice to have electricity recently? Wow. I wish it could be election year every year. 
because then I think we would all get electricity. It's obvious to me that the ANC government is doing everything in its power to make load shedding a thing of the past until the election. But I guarantee you that after the election, no matter who the government is, we will see load shedding, I think. Because that's exactly what happened. I'll never forget the 2014 election. Some of you may be too young to remember that, that election. Literally the day after the election, load shedding came back. Or very soon after. I remember being like, like it was, it was nowhere to be seen. And then once the election happened, load shedding came back. So I think if the ANC can hold off load shedding, because I'm not going to lie, it's been nice to have electricity over these last few days. That'll be a great thing for them. So let's see what happens. Keep an eye on load shedding. The more load shedding, the worse the ANC election result. Another possible game changer is, is if the MK party somehow doesn't end up contesting the election. Either because of internal squabbles or for some other... Uh, legal reason. Now, we've seen the MK party has been able to actually triumph so far in its legal cases. I don't really think it matters so much whether Zuma is on the ballot or not on the ballot, because whether Zuma goes to parliament or he doesn't, the MK party, if the MK party stays coherent, they will still be an electoral force. I actually think it would be would be better for the MK party if Zuma doesn't go to parliament or doesn't even says he doesn't want to go to parliament and just says, says I'm going to direct things from the outside. Um, I'm going to have a more independent perspective. Yes, the troops will be in parliament, but I will be outside parliament. I think that would be uh, actually a strategic move for the MK. But they've decided to fight this and to go to, to try and make sure that Zuma is on the ballot and uh, or at least on the list and does go to parliament. Um, but whether Zuma's in parliament or not, the question is, will the MK party be on that final ballot in the election? Because if the MK party is on that final ballot, I think, I think it's going to be a, a, a seismic election. And I think we could see the ANC in the low 40s. But if they're not, if somehow the MK party implodes, or if... Because remember, there's a lot of pressure on the MK party. It's very new. They're trying to build the airplane while it flies. So you can never rule out the prospect that something unexpected could happen at the, and that the party somehow doesn't make its way to the, to the ballot. But if they do, I think this is going to be a game-changing election. If they don't, then I think we could go back to the, maybe the ANC will just cling on to 50 or or mid to high 40s. There's something I, I, I want to end with, which many analysts haven't noticed about the election. And this is the provincial dynamics. So listen up very carefully, because when I looked at this data, I was like, shocked. You know, you think you know the data, and then you actually go and look at it. So, so I want to take you to the provincial election results, right? But I want to do something different. I want to take the provincial results from the local election, right? So all the votes that were cast in Gauteng, even though in that election we weren't voting for Gauteng, I want to take the Gauteng results from 2021. Have a look at this. And we're going to put this up on the screen as well. The ANC, okay, we know in the Western Cape, the ANC is nowhere, but it turns out that the DA's majority in the Western Cape is, is under threat. So that's one province that already is going to be an interesting race beyond the national. Will the DA keep its 50% or will it lose the 50%? So province number one, tick. Province number two, the Northern Cape. In 2019, the ANC got 57% there, right? 57. 
in 2021, if you take all the votes cast in the Northern Cape, the ANC got 50.17, which means province number two, tick, is in play. Watch what happens in the Northern Cape because the ANC could lose its majority there. Northwest. Okay, one would think no one's talking about Northwest in this election, right? The ANC got 61% in 2019. In 2021, if you count all the votes in the province of the Northwest, the ANC was on 56%. So what happens if the MK party gets 6% from the ANC? Northwest is in play. Okay, Mpumalanga? No ways could, could Mpumalanga ever be in play, right? The ANC got 70% in Mpumalanga in, in 2019. But some polls have the MK party at 18% in Pumalanga. Where were they in the local election? 68. Could the MK party throw up a surprise? Because that's their second most um, powerful province. Could MK get 18 in Pumalanga and push the ANC potentially to a tricky election in Pumalanga? I mean, these are the kinds of things we have to now consider. Okay, ah, Limpopo, um, yeah, Limpopo's ANC territory line. Limpopo's not going anywhere, guys. Limpopo's not an interesting race. 75%, 68%, and it doesn't look like anyone is touching the ANC in Limpopo, okay? So, so far we have one province that's not interesting. KZN. ANC got 54% in 2019. 2021, they got 42%. They're currently polling in the 20s in some polls there. So what, let's just take a step back already. KZN is in play. It's interesting. Mpumalanga is interesting. Northwest is interesting. Northern Cape is interesting. Western Cape is interesting. Five interesting provincial races. We're not even used to this as South Africans. Like, we don't even look at provincial elections. We just know it's ANC. We're interested in national. No. Five provinces are interesting. We haven't even got to Gauteng. Make that six. In 2019, Gauteng was 50% for the ANC, 50.1 or something. If you take the local elections, they got 34% of all Gauteng votes. Gauteng is very interesting. Free State, 2019, 61% in the ANC corner. But in 2021, 51%. Free state is in play. So, far from there only being three interesting races, the Western Cape, Gauteng, and, and KZN, which everyone has spoken about, I would argue that there are potentially six interesting provincial races in this election. Okay, Eastern Cape and Limpopo, that's ANC stronghold territory. So actually seven. Free state is interesting. KZN is interesting. Gauteng is interesting. Mpumalanga is interesting. Northwest is interesting. Northern Cape is interesting. Western Cape is interesting. Do you understand what this means? Like, we could have seven hung provinces. Okay, seven is, but even if it's four or five. And then we could have a hung parliament. So all of the provincial dynamics in five or four or six provinces could be feeding into the national picture. And that's where this election could be a game changer, is that whether the ANC does lose its majority in these places, the, the point is that all of these provinces are starting to become interesting. So we're entering a new era of South African pro uh, politics, not just where there are three interesting provinces or two or one, but where the majority of provinces are starting to also become uncertain in terms of which party will have the outright majority and what the coalitions could be. 
So in the absolute worst case scenario for the ANC, they could lose six or <laughs> or seven provinces and the national election. Of course, in the best case, they hang on to most of those provinces and the national election. But I, I think people are sleeping on how important these provincial elections are also going to be. Now, I'm not saying that the ANC is going to lose all of these, right? I'm just saying pay attention to all of the, to these seven races because they will be interesting. Even if the ANC is at 55 in some of these places, that's a very different dynamic to being at 65. Or if they're at 51, that's very different to being at 55. So I would argue that this is the most fascinating election in South African history so far, that we have provincial and national dynamics to contend with. And hopefully you won't have got that analysis anywhere else so far. So now you know which races to look out for. Now you know which numbers to look out for. And believe me, stay tuned to this channel. We'll go through all the polls. We'll do all the predictions and the build-up. And of course, we'll look at the election results when they come out. Don't even get me started on the formation of a new government, which is a whole new video that I'm going to do because we don't even know what's going to happen in the two weeks between the announcement of the election date and the formation of a new government. Keep it locked on SMWX, spread the fire, like, share, subscribe, and help us build this channel. Let's get to 100k subscribers by the election. Aye, aye.